we're here we're gonna start unboxing the system here I bought a universal type kit that is used for windshield wipers and stuff like that and this kit is available online and eBay I do have some more information about this in the description and there's a few comments about where you could get different parts and stuff like that the kit that we are using here actually comes with a few parts including the small water pump there's a little piece of hose and there's some mounting equipment with it so you can actually have most parts that you would need for this already there. There's even some extra parts that you would maybe not need. For each individual installation, it'll be different. So I'm doing some custom brackets here to mount it where I want it to be. Uh, depending on the space that you have available, you can actually mount it anywhere you would like. You may not need to do a bracket like I did. You could just use the copper type thing that it comes with. But in my case, I don't have much space to use it. So I actually created a bracket to mount it close to where the actual radiator reservoir tank is. The reason I'm doing this is because there's an excessive heat in the FRS because the hood is actually sealed on the bottom. It has a metal plate on the top. It's completely sealed and has some rubber seals around it. And the issue that I have is that my car is not stock. When your car is stock, that should be okay because they made it with those specifications in mind. But once you put a turbo, a supercharger or whatever, you get more power out of it, you get more heat. So if you put a header on it, if you do some type of modification to up the horsepower, and what that means is that that heat will stay locked up in there since the hood is sealed and there's no ventilation in it the heat is a bit more excessive than a stock car so in my case I do have a standard water injection kit made from AEM and that kit I use for standard water injection stuff it has like 50 50 percent um, methanol and water and that is injected directly or as close as possible to the throttle body and that is my main system this system is like a secondary system that'll be used to cool the charger. Some people actually use them pre-turbo because as the turbos get so hot that they get red hot, well, they use the water injection to cool that down. That's the same deal as the turbo systems that have the water in that go through it as well as oil. So in my case, I'm gonna use a pre-charger water only kit so that it cools down the actual body of the charger. This water level sensor that I'm using here is not exactly the best option. We tried first with this one. It's supposed to be like when the water level cuts down, it'll stop doing the connection and that will actually make the sensor work. But in the setup that I'm using did not work correctly and I had to go back to the shop and get another one that's one of those that actually comes with a little pivoting point that moves along with the water and when the water level goes way down, the little pivoting point just drops and that turns on the system or the light or whatever you want to use it keep in mind as well that that is not a, like a 12 volt system it is not a trigger it is a system that you have to use with an already type of system that's available for that i did connect that system to the system that already the aem has when the water is low on the aem or when the water is low on this can since both sensors are connected it'll turn on so either one of them if the water is low they'll turn on as always, if you're going to modify your car, you're going to need a way to monitor your system. So you should add an air fuel ratio or other gauges that could help you measure the mixture of fuel in your car. And also, as I mentioned, add a system that allows you to measure or know the level of water that you have in your tank. If you're going to use that and tune your car for it. If you're going to use it as an extra and you're not going to tune your car, it's not really necessary. You could just use it as is. But if you're going to use it and tune the car for it, the car is going to expect it. And when the water runs out, it's not going to have it and you may break your car. So very careful with that. You may need to modify that. You may not. Just work with it according to your setup and you should be okay. So for this specific system, what I'm doing is I'm using a boost controller or a boost switch, however you want to call it. And that is set up manually to three pounds of boost. Whenever that sensor reads three pounds of boost, this will actually turn on the pump and the pump will actually start throwing water in the system. You may want to get something like that or maybe that turns on by RPM so you don't have this thing all the time turned on. It should be a supplementary system or it should just turn on when you're above a certain RPM or a certain boost range. It works better that way. If you have it so it's always turned on, you're gonna have a problem. If you're using it directly in the throttle body, you're gonna change your mixer all the time. It's gonna run way too rich and you don't want that. You're going to want to set it up so it turns on later. As well as it's a good idea to have a system that either turns off the pump when there's no water or as I said have a system that tells you when the water is running out so you can actually fill it up and it's only going to be water unless you're going to use it as a method system. 
so you could stop basically anywhere and get some water in it and that will also help to avoid the pump getting damaged because if you run these pumps without any liquid for long periods of time they will damage and break down as i said the car will not be tuned for this specific system in my setup that i'm doing here what we're going to do is that we're going to add this to dissipate the heat of the charger and yes some people are going to tell me oh that's going to damage this charger you're throwing water directly at the blades and stuff like that and yes with time with many many years who knows it may damage the charger itself it's not going to break down the charger realistically it's not going to happen people have been using water injection for many many years on airplanes and cars okay this is the new sensor that i'm going to use this is the basic type of sensor that the original aem and other system have uh, water injection kits have available i got this one off autozone here's the part number in case you need it and now it's time for a break okay so back to work any amount of different things and a lot of people actually prefer to have a pre-charger system and it won't damage the system just like that it's not like you're going to use it for a month it's going to damage your system maybe 10 years down the road you can see that the water has hit the blades and maybe corroded a little bit maybe taken a little bit off of it but it's not going to break it or something like that it's just going to maybe leave a mark because water is going to be hitting at high speeds on a certain given part for a lot of time and water tends to do that it tends to break rocks and if you're on the shoreline or whatever so it's not really going to break everything up not specifically quick and it's not something you're going to be having on all the time as well as you do have to have a water injection nozzle the sprayer it's only going to throw a small very light mist of water to your system it's not going to throw a lot of water in it so it's not like like you have a fountain of water pre-charger or something like that in my setup the reason that i'm not going to use alcohol or methanol in it it's because it's going to be on the filter and it's going to drip on the header and you know alcohol is flammable and i don't want it to catch fire and i don't really need it pre-turbo or pre-charger so i'm just going to use water to cool down the heat in there so yeah the other reason i can use water from basically anything or anywhere this is how we set up the nozzle that is the nozzle that comes for the methanol injection it's a sprayer or a mist nozzle here are the specifications for it and this is the way we set it up. I put it on the center of the filter and it's going to spray directly in front of the charger and that goes directly to the pump. So when the system turns on, the pump will throw water through a short hose. It's like a foot and a half. That hose goes connected to the L fitting that we have here and that will go directly to the nozzle. And from the nozzle, it'll just spray a light mist of water on the charger. I wanted to get everything connected and wired as simple as possible. So I started connecting everything as a single unit and in the car there's only a plug that you can take off or put on and take the whole system off without having to worry about the wires and everything. It's a completely removable system. If you want to add this system directly you can make it turn on when you turn on the car, you positive and negative that turns on when you put the car key in or put the accessory in and stuff like that. If you want to put it directly you can actually connect this so that it turns on when you turn the key in it turns to accessory or when you turn the car on. It's fairly simple to get a fuse that actually works with that. If you want to go a little bit further, you can add a relay so that it turns on a relay when it hits power and that will turn on the pump. Or as I said, you could use a sensor that either turns on with RPMs or with boost, which is, I think, the best way to go. And the boost switches are actually kind of cheap on eBay if you get one that you could actually adjust. If you do a search on eBay for adjustable boost switch you will find a few different boost switches that can actually help you out with this or similar setups okay this is how everything looks set together this is how we're going to put the tank in the car and as you can see here it's a single unit just put it in place and throw it in there and if you want to take it off just pull it up and take it off it doesn't take that much space because it's just a small little bottle we did have to modify the fan mount a little bit to make it fit correctly as i wanted it to fit and not touch anything so this is a simple thing that we had to do. It's not that hard. We just measured it and started cutting with the Dremel. Once we had it set up the way we wanted to, I just cleaned things up, used the little L brackets that I created before, and used the bracket that came with the kit to hold the tank in place, which was fairly simple to do. Now, as I said, you may have more space to actually put this in a different location, or you may want to add this as a main system. In that case, you may need another pump if you're going to use it for a turbocharged or supercharged car. 
if you're, you're going to use it for a natural aspirated car you may not need any of that you could use the standard pump here and it should work fine as well okay so here we're putting together the brackets i'm drilling some little holes back there so that you can actually put the l brackets in the l brackets are bolted on to the actual bracket that comes with the little tank reservoir and that will hold everything in place the single bracket holds everything even when full of water because the tank is fairly small and it's not really that heavy even when it's filled with water so we went ahead and we used the fan mount to hold the brackets in place we tried to use some self-locking nuts but it was fairly hard to do in the space that we had available we could have taken off the radiator taken off the fan mount and actually connected the bracket and then put everything back together but that'll be a whole lot of work and I just decided to mix the bolts, use some bolts that use a nut, use some bolts that just screw into the plastic. And, you know, the combination worked out pretty well. And it allowed me to put it together without having to take everything apart to make things fit correctly. As you can see here, we're hiding the wires and mounting everything as cleanly as possible. And in the end, after we have everything mounted together, we will cut off the wire closer to the tank and put a plug in there, a male and female plug one on the tank and one on the cable so that we can make it completely removable. Hiding the wires is a simple task and it all depends on the setup that you're actually doing, the car that you have and the amount of space that you have available. So basically after you have everything mounted up and you know what you're going to do and put things together and you think you're almost done, it's always good to do double checks and verify that everything is mounted correctly, things are not touching one another if it's like hot and cold stuff and, and you don't want like for example in this case it was almost touching the charger so I didn't want that so I moved it a little bit to the side a little bit back and also on the bottom if you notice it was also almost touching the header so we tinkered with it a little bit until we got it to fit just right that it had a good amount of clearance that it didn't touch anything actually and as you can see here everything is connected it looks very clean very nice if people don't actually look for it they wouldn't even know it was there because it looks like something that would come there originally it looks like another reservoir for the radiator maybe if somebody knows about it they'll be like oh it's another reservoir why do you have two reservoirs that's not that it's connected to something else but you know that's what we wanted to achieve actually something that looks natural doesn't look too obtrusive they are cheap parts but you can make them look good if you do a good job with it okay it's a small tank it doesn't take that much amount of water so we just filled it up to do some testing and everything is connected basically very close to where the original AEM tank, which is all the way to the back there, to one liter tank. Everything is connected to the fuse box on the outside. And we're using the fuses that actually the car already has from the factory to connect our system. We just look for fuses that turned on when you put the key on and stuff like that. And you connect that either directly to the fuse or you can buy a fuse separator that has like two fuses and you can actually use one fuse to convert it to two leave the original fuse and have an extra fuse for the system that you're adding it depends on the setup that you're doing if you're doing it on the frs there's a few selections out that you can use to actually get these wires connected directly to the system or to a fuse or if you would like as well connect a relay and have a relay in there we wanted to go as minimal as possible so we just added some extra fuses or some fuse extenders or however you want to call them so that we had like a fuse for this system but it's connected to the fuses on the car itself this part is not really hard to do. We just went a little bit extra with hiding the wires and making everything fit in the fuse box and stuff like that. And this is kind of how everything turned out. We had a fuse. We actually changed that fuse later on because we put in like an inline fuse. We didn't like it that much. So we kind of changed the setup a little bit, but this is basically what you need to do. You could look for the pin as we show here. And that pin will give you positive when you put the key on. And the negative is connected to the boost switch so that when the boost actually reaches as I said three pounds of boost it'll turn on the system okay here we're doing some preliminary tests you can see that it drips water out of the filters that's why we are not using actual methanol or alcohol on the system we're just using water as I've mentioned before it's not going to make any difference on the effect that's going to have on the car because I am mounting this system as an extra system to cool down the charger if you're using it for your main system as I also said, you may want to change the pump, first of all, if your car is boosted, and also have a system to measure the amount of water or tell you when the water is going low if you're going to actually use it and tune for the system itself. 
This is an example of the mist of water that actually goes into the charger when the system turns on. As you can see, it's a very light, very small mist. You can actually use a bigger nozzle if you want to have a bigger output. I use the smallest nozzle in the AEM kit. So what that means is that I have very little water going into the system. In case you're wondering, the water will go into the charger. Some of that water may go down into the system. But once it reaches the intercooler, which is in between this kit and the engine, of course, it'll dissipate in that because the heat of the intercooler will actually get the water in, you know, it'll dissipate in the heat of that. So none of this water from this kit is on the front of the charger or pre-charger is going to actually go into the throttle body. The throttle body has another system, which as I said, is the one that you can see on the screen. It's the AEM kit. It's the bigger white tank on the back. And that one does go into the throttle system there. Okay, and that brings us to the end of this video. I'm hoping that doing the remake or reboot of this video has worked out because there was a lot of feedback with the previous video, which only had music and subs in it. I think it's not really as helpful as having a voiceover video or a voice video. But at the time when I did this video originally, I was not doing voiceovers yet. I didn't have good recording equipment. So I ended up doing subtitles and adding some music to it. But now that I've gone a little bit further and I have some good recording equipment, I'm trying this reboot or remake of the video. And hopefully it has better explained the reasoning behind this kit, what we want to achieve with it, how you can actually use it for yourself or what you can actually use it for yourself if you want to make one. There's some information, as I said, on the description on where you can get the parts or what parts you can get. And this should give you a basic idea of what you can do if you're looking into getting a system like this for your car. Always remember that you're doing DIY stuff and you're modifying your car. There's always a chance that you do something incorrectly and you damage your car. So keep that in mind. Always double check and always make sure that you're connecting everything correctly and safely. Put fuses wherever you need to put a fuse. Add relays if you need to add relays. Make sure that there's no water leaks or as I said, we had it close to the header. That's why we're not using alcohol or methanol in it. But if you're going to use it, just make sure that you put it somewhere that it doesn't get hot, somewhere that it doesn't catch fire easily, or it doesn't drip on anything. And if you take the precautions and double check everything, you do have a better chance of not breaking something. So take your time, look for all the parts you need, make sure that you have everything you need to make it work correctly, and have some fun. You know, build whatever you think is going to work for you. Try it out. If it works out, well, perfect. You know, I don't really mind negative comments or feedback of people telling me that this doesn't work or how I'm going to damage this or that or the other. I've been using this for quite a while now and it's not giving me any issues, actually. Take any or all of this information with a grain of salt. Make sure that you understand what you're getting into before you actually get into it and make sure that you have the understanding of what you're going to do and what you're going to and what you want to achieve before you try it. And I hope you have fun. Find the video useful and enjoyed watching it. Thank you very much. Until the next video.